and welcome to Luminous. I am Father Jim Sullivan, a priest for the Diocese of Oakland and uh, currently chaplain at Bishop O'Dowd High School in Oakland. Our uh, subject today is um, responding to the call. We'll start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and loving God, uh, we thank you uh, for the disciples who said yes to the call of Jesus. As disciples ourselves, we want to say yes as well, and we want to accomplish your will as perfectly as possible. Help us then, Lord, as you helped the apostles and the other disciples who walked with you, talked with you, ate, drank, laughed, and cried with you. Help us uh, to uh, fulfill uh, that mission, that purpose, which you have given us here in the world as our call to discipleship. In Jesus' name, by the power of your Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, the reading from Matthew today uh, tells us about Jesus calling the uh, disciples right there on the shore of Galilee. He calls the, uh, uh, the brothers, James and John, and uh, Peter and Andrew. And of course, later he calls uh, the other apostles and the disciples who flock to him. And then uh, Romans uh, talks to us about what it is to be called, what's expected of us once we're called. Uh, we are to go out and proclaim uh, the, uh, the good news, the light, the truth, and the joy of the gospel uh, to all those who come across our path. So we are called, as Matthew points out, we are called and sent, as uh, uh, Paul points out in the letter to the Romans, but we aren't sent unequipped. We are called, we are sent, and we are gifted to achieve a particular purpose that no one else can manage. There's a, there's a mission. There's something here in the world for you to do. It's the reason why you were born, and no one else can do it. And uh, God wants to equip you uh, for this mission, uh, for this, uh, uh, this great work which involves not just your salvation, but the salvation perhaps of everyone he sends across your path. Perhaps even the, the cashier at, uh, at the, the dry cleaners or the uh, teller at the bank or a cab driver. You never know when some kindness on your part, perhaps as, as simple as a smile, is going to help spread the light of the kingdom into the heart of another person and help discipleship there to bloom. So we are called, we are sent, and God gifts us. He doesn't just send us out unequipped. There is, uh, from the Siena Institute um, uh, in uh, 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 Berkeley, um, a uh, called and gifted workshop, a program which helps uh, disciples, uh, that is to say, us, followers of Christ, to determine um, what particular charisms and gifts God has given us, all right, to, uh, to accomplish the, um, the work that God would, uh, would have us do to help build discipleship uh, among others. The Called and Gifted Workshop has an, uh, uh, what we call an assessment or a battery where you answer just a whole lot of questions about uh, where your priorities lie and then scored on a computer, you get a printout that shows you the, uh, uh, the particular gifts, the particular charisms which you have, which can help you in your discipleship walk in carrying out your call, your mission, your particular um, uh, set of responsibilities to bring about uh, this, uh, this blossoming of the kingdom in the hearts of other human beings. When I took the Called and Gifted workshop, first uh, as a youth minister in Marysville before I became a seminarian, and then later uh, at one of the Fremont parishes as I was uh, very near uh, my ordination to priesthood as, a, as a, an advanced seminarian. Both times, a couple things that came up high for me. Um, uh, one surprised me, one didn't. One was that I have a charism for giving, a charism for generosity. And uh, uh, the other, that didn't really surprise me. The, other thing that surprised me, though, was that I had a charism, apparently, for evangelical poverty. I've never 
wanted to be poor. <laughs> Although I suppose if you give away enough, which I like doing, if you give away enough, you could make yourself poor. That's never been a, an objective of mine. I'm not with St. Francis on that. I don't embrace Lady Poverty the way he did. I like being a parish priest and having a regular income and a, and a warm place to go to bed at night. But uh, it was interesting. Evangelical poverty came up high, which is something that I need to let the Lord use in me. Um, and I know I already let him use the uh, charism for giving, the charism for generosity, because I love to give. It's fun. I'm, I'm literally what uh, St. Paul called the cheerful giver. Um, it just, it's, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather really, most of the time at least, give than receive, because I receive so much in giving. All right, it's, uh, I, I, I don't want to make it sound any, like anything saintly. It's something I get so much back, all right, from giving of myself, whether it's money, whether it's time, whether it's uh, energy, uh, talent, whatever. Uh, I love to give and I get so much back from giving, all right? So um, the uh, Called and Gifted Workshop is there to, uh, to assist us uh, in, in identifying uh, strengths and, and gifts, charisms from God. The Strength Finders Workshop, which is another um, recently developed uh, uh, tool um, by, the, uh, by the church to help us identify uh, particular areas of strength and ability. Um, also, uh, you, you, you answer a, a battery of, of questions in a test-like format, and then it's, it's scored on a computer and you get back uh, your five leading strengths. Um, my, my top strength was strategic thinking, which when I first saw it, I said, I, what's that? Then I heard what it was and I said, Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's that's pretty much me. It's interesting taking these uh, the called and gifted workshop or the strength finders uh, assessment. It's interesting to find out uh, how God has already prepared you uh, for uh, for the work that He has for you in the church and in the world. Um, the underlying message of uh, both of uh, strength finders and the called and gifted workshop, of course, is to help us to understand we're called, we're sent, but we are sent gifted. We are sent empowered, all right? If you've got something to do in the world, and you do, God is going to help you to accomplish it. He's going to qualify you to do it. God does not call the qualified. God qualifies the called. In Matthew, we see Jesus calling the fishermen. Fishermen, all right? Fishermen will become uh, the, uh, uh, the evangelist uh, to the Eastern Mediterranean world and transform over time the entire world with the, uh, the establishment of the church and uh, the winning of converts in their, uh, well, at this point, hundreds of millions. This, uh, this actually two billion Christians, if we count everybody, okay, all the different, all the various denominations, put us all together as we should because we're all followers of Christ, two billion people who have heard the message in, in the world today and who are followers of Christ, this astounding historical reality that is the church founded by fishermen, guys who cast their nets into the sea, right? But if you look at it, you look at what, what a fisherman did, all right, and what fishermen do, you can see that God was already at work preparing, all right, the apostles for their great work as evangelists, as leaders of the church, as founders of the church. What does a fisherman do? He casts the net and he makes a catch. The, uh, uh, the apostles, as Jesus put it, became fishers of men and women. Um, and it is, it is to the, uh, to the uh, shores of the Sea of Galilee that the Lord goes. It is to the lowly, to the uneducated, that he goes to do this great work of evangelizing the world and building up the kingdom here on earth, establishing the church. It is to the lowly that he goes. It's not to the marbled halls of uh, the palace of Herod. All right. It's uh, it's not to uh, it's not to the the uh, uh, columned gateways of the uh, Roman governor. It's to the humble fishing fleets along the shores of the Sea of Galilee. For as Our Lady uh, says in her Magnificat, God lifts up the lowly and does great things through them. Don't doubt that God's got great work for you. You're already at work. At it. People sometimes come to me, they say, Father Jim, what, what, I don't know what God's will for me is. What I say is, what are your circumstances? Who's in your life? Who needs you? Uh, what, what responsibilities are legitimately yours to try to meet? In the circumstances of our lives, we can see the will of God. And then it's just a matter of bringing light into those circumstances and to remember that every path is a path to sainthood 
if we want it to be. You might say, I don't like some of the circumstances of my life. That's okay. That may come from God. God perhaps doesn't like some of those circumstances either and wants to empower you to bring about change. I want to talk a little bit about uh, my own call uh, within the call. Not so much the, um, the call to priesthood. Talk about that another time. But uh, what God did with me once, as soon as I said yes to the call uh, to priesthood, God called me into youth ministry. Now, that's a long story. I'm not going to go into it here today. But as no sooner had I said, yes, I will consider becoming a priest, uh, no sooner had I done that than did God uh, send a messenger my way asking me to help teach the confirmation class in my home parish of Marysville, which was the beginning of youth ministry for me. Today, I am a, a chaplain at a major Catholic high school in the East Bay, 1,200 students, the largest youth ministry uh, uh, assignment of my life. And it started uh, 23 years ago when I said yes, 24 years ago, actually, when I said yes uh, to, the, uh, to the invitation to start uh, teaching the confirmation class. I see how God was preparing me for that, just as he was preparing the apostles for their work when they were casting their nets and catching fish. Eventually, they were going to catch men and women, all right, casting the net of the gospel and catching souls, all right? Um, I see how God was preparing me as well uh, for, for my work uh, with the youth. It goes back to when I was an undergraduate at Berkeley. I was a resident assistant in the dorms for three years. An RA in the dorms is um, a staff member in, in a dormitory. There were, we had 208 students. There were four RAs. I was one of them for three years. You counseled the young people. You helped them, mentored them. When it was necessary to, uh, to enforce some kind of discipline in the dorm, you did that. Um, it, was a, it was a leadership position among the young in the dorms at UC Berkeley. And I rose through the ranks as RA, as assistant hall coordinator, and then as a hall coordinator, that is, I was the lead RA in my dorm the last year. It was great work, I loved it, and it was ministry to the young. I didn't really see it that way at the time, but now I look back on it and realize God was preparing me for the work he had for me as a priest, as a youth priest, all right? Uh, I went to work after that at the Career Planning and Placement Center in Berkeley. Um, as a young man just out of college, I wanted summers free. The Career Planning and Placement Center had a number of jobs that let uh, employees there take the summer off if they wanted to. And um, I wanted to write in the summers and to work during the year. And that's how I planned and organized my life. And I worked in the recruiting office. And I worked there for almost 17 years. I started young in my 20s. I finished there at 41. I worked with our graduating seniors and graduate students who were looking for jobs. I helped them with their resumes. I helped them with interviews. I, uh, I uh, counseled them. I worked uh, closely with, uh, in, in several unofficial capacities uh, at, at Career Planning and Placement. I worked closely with uh, students who were younger than I, all right? We had official people doing counseling and that kind of thing, but a lot of the kids, because I was closer to them in age, came and asked me questions, and I was happy to answer, happy to introduce them to everything we had there, a career planning and placement that could assist them in, uh, in finding out what God wanted from them, finding out their mission in life and being prepared for it. And uh, so I look now at my work at uh, the Career Planning and Placement Center with the young, and I grew progressively older, and they were progressively younger. As my 30s, I'm looking at them going, wow, these kids are in their 20s, their early 20s. Again, as though I were being prepared. Uh, to, uh, to minister uh, to the young. Perhaps the biggest, uh, the, the biggest place where, where God really made a difference for me with the young was with my Oakland nieces, Sarah, Lupe, and Marisol. I moved in with my sister Liz and my brother, uh, brother-in-law Hector uh, when I was 29 and lived with them for 10 years and helped raise my Oakland nieces. This was, to this day, the deepest unearned joy I've ever had in my life. My nieces were just, they were little. Sarah, six, Lupe, four, Marisol not born yet. Marisol was born the year I was 29. I was with them for 10 years, saw them into high school, Sarah and Lupe anyway, and Marisol up until she was 10 years old. Living with them, going to Disneyland, going to Tahoe, going to San Francisco to, uh, to shop at uh, Christmas and for their birthdays. The young, the very young experience with the young and watching them grow. 
I'm really glad as a priest that I had that experience. And I see it now as, uh, uh, again, part of the Lord's preparing me for the work that I would be called into as a youth priest. God has work for you. He is calling you to it. He will send you into it, and he will prepare and gift you for it. Trust that dynamic. Let's end with a prayer. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you for the fact that you call, send, and gift us. Help us to trust your capacity to empower us. We make this prayer in Jesus' name, by the power of your Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.